in the past few years, we've worked with men, we've worked with doctors, we've worked with uh, 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 major airline pilots, we've worked with lawyers, we've worked with men that, again, that are at the top of their game, not, you know, not 20 year old pilots, but, you know, 50 year old pilots and doctors, like men who are at the top of their game, not that they regret their path or they would do something else, but still that deep, deep existential, what the fuck am I supposed to be doing here? that transcends my, my job title, like yeah. that kind of disorientation, I think is common in men. I think what I've been experiencing coming back to, you know, the last year or two or so, I think being a relationship that can get even more, even more complicated, it, it gets complex because it's one thing to be clear about where I might go as a single man, but now I'm in partnership with a woman who has her own orientation, who has her own visions and dreams and needs and all of that. And, and finding my way inside of that, oh man, that's been next level. Welcome to Men This Way. Tate, my man. What's up? What's up, brother? Oh man, I miss you, man. We had that epic retreat, a re-retreat back to Lake Arrowhead, man. I, I, I miss being in your presence, man. Likewise, man. It's... uh. I think the last time we did that, so for our listeners, Tate and I, the last, what was it? Just like two, three weeks ago, two weeks yeah. ago, yeah, we yeah. were up in the mountains again and uh, east of Los Angeles at the same place that we rented, I think six years ago. Yeah. Uh, when all, when Men This Way, all of this was was born that weekend. Yeah. And yeah. so we, we got to revisit that and yeah, we need to do that more than just once every six years, man. That needs to be uh, <laughs> We got at least every year, every yeah, two, two at the years, most. You know, we're busy men in the world. I don't know, but it was, it's a, of such a vital importance, man. I definitely came back from the mountain with, with some much needed clarity and, uh, yeah. you know, feeling reinvigorated and reoriented in some ways. Yeah. And, and I, th I think that's probably a really good segue into what we're going to dive into today. Totally. But first, before we do that, we okay. have a cause for celebration. Okay. Oh, yeah. Because you, uh, right? We're yeah. The we're very the time first... of recording this, where it's October seventeenth. Yep. We had about ten guys apply so far for Elevate twenty twenty five. We have just had uh, the first invitation extended and accepted. Man, it's just such a it's such a profound and powerful and beautiful. Uh, experience that we get to have to have conversations the, the most important conversations that men need to be having in their life to be able to be having those with men and to watch this guy just get so lit up getting clear about what he wants about what's been holding him back and to get hope again you know he he made this really powerful statement he said that i'm not sure that i've ever been surrounded by men but I have been surrounded by a whole lot of males. Mm, yeah. Yeah. And I was like, uh, yeah. wow, that's, I'm, I'm going to write that one down. I mean, fraternity, uh, yeah. sports leagues, yeah. sports teams, uh, military. I mean, that was me surrounded by so many males, certainly no elders, but also, well, yeah, that's profound, man. You know, he, what he was really speaking to is like, he never felt like he had been initiated into an experience that had him feel like, man, I've arrived. And so going through life, often second guessing, you wrote about this a man who doesn't get his father's praise, you know, the impact that that can have. But, but here's this guy who just never really felt like he'd been initiated, feels like he's been second guessing himself for so long and was ready to, to stop doing that and have a new brand new experience. And, and this is a man who is succeeding wildly. Oh, totally. Well, look, look, we, we laughed because one of the things I love about the group experience that we get to have, you know, we, we interview 70 guys because most men's groups are come one, come all. If you can afford the experience, we want you. And that's not at all the way we've designed this. And th this is a guy who's been doing personal growth and development work for almost 25 years. Yeah. But he's never been in a container with other men who have been doing Now, you don't need to be doing 20 or 25 years. But yeah. most men's group are, are inundated with men who have been smacked in the face for the very first time and realize that he needs some help, but he hasn't been doing his own work. 
And so what I really love is that this is a, a group of guys who not only have needs that they want to be fulfilled, but they have offerings that they're ready to provide other men, some get their own, bring their own gifts to it. So this is a guy who's got tons of gifts. He's ready to jump in. Uh, you know, one of the things that he said was that he, he was ready to live a life in which he's enthusiastic to live. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like what a novel concept to, to be, be enthusiastic, yeah. a 54 year old guy, uh, actually turns 54 in a couple of days B and business owner, right? Successful married, been up with a partner for 15 years, his five-year-old son. Uh, I'm not giving away any of them. Obviously his names, uh, you know, I, I, I hold that, hold that sacred and confidential, but just, so honored. And I think the, the part of the conversation that really just lit me up, right? One of the, we, we go through the, in this enrollment experience, it's not about selling you on anything. It's about giving you an experience for you to feel like you have clarity about the way that you want to spend the next 12 months of your life and for him to get clarity about what he wanted. But also then we dive in specifically about, okay, well then if, if this is your overall vision, what are the areas of your life that you really want to elevate? What are, what are three areas of your life that you want to elevate? What would it look like to do that? And then we went into this really powerful conversation around, you know, Stephen Pressfield's book, the war of art, the war of art, where what he shares and what we work with the, the premise of, of our work is that there's only one thing that's really standing in the way of a man from where he is today and where he wants to go. There's only one thing. It, it, that's both very illuminating and helpful because shit, if there's only one thing, I could deal with one thing. And usually I usually ask guys, well, what do you think the, the one thing that's standing in your way of where you are now and where this, this new vision that you have? And they usually say myself, and they're right. Right. And then, well, yeah, there, but, but there's a part of you. And the second answer is usually fear. And that is also true. There's elements of that, but the number one thing that's standing, this is for the guy that's listening for the woman who's listening. The number one thing that's standing in the way of where you are today and where you want to want to be in your life is resistance. It's your resistance. And then we got to have, you know, our, our distinctions that we give here is that there's five things. There's five dead ends. There's five things that are standing in the way of the resistance that we have in our life that we got to peel back the layers on because if we deal with these five things, a whole world gets to open up to us. And let's pause here for a second. Let's talk about resistance more because I think that alone, <clears throat> I read that book years ago, the, the, the war of art. And yes, that, that, uh, Stephen Pressfield, I think, I think, you know, he's writing it from the perspective of the creator, right. Yeah. Of, a, of, a, yeah. of a writer specifically Yeah. and talking about all the ways that resistance comes in and, and wants to sabotage you from doing the thing, you know, you're supposed to be doing, which is writing. And, and well, his, and I, I like the way you actually said it. It's true. It's from the frame of writing, but the creator, the creator, right. Creating something, right. The author of your life in, in this, you know, to broaden it up. And, you know, I, I just, so resistance can be everything from wanting to watch TV instead of, uh, you know, read the, the Carl Jung book that you're supposed to be reading for your, your training program, speaking to myself <laughs> right now, but also, you know, there's a, there's a, so I want, I want to just share a massive resistance that has just been fucking with me, man. And you know about this, Tate. And I mean, I haven't been silent about this, but like, you know, what, what Sylvie and I've been through the last few years, the, 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 the painful losses, the, all of the cross country moves, the, <clears throat> the, you know, just various, what, what appear to be setbacks uh, in, in our life. And, and certainly some, some deep, deep, you know, losses, like not being able to have a child. And, and, um, and on top of all of that, now we've come back to Los Angeles and a place that I never, I never wanted to come back to. And here we are. Yeah. And I have been in so much fucking resistance, like to my life. 
you know, and that's, boy, I mean, the pain of that, the pain of that and the, and the consequences, it's, unfa- it's like hard to even fathom what the consequences are of that, just being in resistance to what is unfolding. You know, and, and I think, I think that's the key thing for a man to really pay attention to is, is the pain that it causes, the pain that it fucking causes to be in resistance. I'm, we're not talking about not working hard or, or not, you know, striving for your goal or your potential, all that. We're talking about just resisting what is like functioning from a place of, I don't like what's happening here, or I don't want what is happening to be happening or, and and so on and so forth. And the pain, not just that results in yourself, in myself, but the ripple effect of that, you know, into, into the world. Yeah, because, you know, I think that the illusion that we get told as men is, you know, it's just people in general, like we, we, we're under the illusion that if we could control everything, everything would be better. Oh man, there's a few knobs I'd like to twist to (laughs) switch up the screen of of my life. Yeah, no doubt. But, and what, to realize that it really is an illusion because how many times have we got what we thought that we want and needed only to find out that it actually doesn't bring the fulfillment that we've longed for. Well, that's, that's one of the things that gives me both solace and it's a reminder that, that it changing the external circumstances. While again, there's nothing wrong with striving and being the creator, the author of your life. We're all for it, but it is an illusion that being able to do that is going to somehow bring me the peace of mind and the, and the, because what, what gives me solace is I look at other men. I mean, I am connected intimately with other men who are, again, succeeding. They have all the things that I, my brain is telling me. If I only had those things, then I'll be happy. Then I can relax. And man, dudes are suffering. They're still struggling even when they have those things. Well, and, and part of the struggle is that they they got them it, and the unmet expectation is that those were the things that were going to give them the happiness. The, the false, the myth, the myth the that myth. they've been buying into. Right. Cause as soon as you have the relationship, now you got to be in it, <laughs> right? As soon as you have the job, now you got to go and do it. As soon as you have the car, you got to take it into the shop to get it, get it handled. As soon as you, you know, schedule the vacation, you got to deal with the consequences of being away from your job you, you, to be you, able to go on it. You buy the house, as- you got to spend the money to maintain the air conditioning unit and fix the the, <laughs> the gutters when the storm comes through. And, and, all and rake the fucking leaves when they're about to fall. You know, I got a pool right now. If I should, could show you the 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 picture of that you would laugh it's the sisyphean task of trying to keep my pool clean and here i am like there's two different ways that i can look at that right like oh shit i gotta go and the other is i got a pool i got a you know so anyway it's the this is this is the problem that i think that we face and and when and and it and it shouldn't stop us from wanting to create something new that that we have this is the powerful thing about being creators in our life is that that there's two different ways I think that we can look at things as as men in our lives. The first is to frame things as a problem that needs to be solved. Now, if there's a problem that needs to be solved, then somebody is responsible for for creating the problem and that person needs to be blamed. And it's either outside of themselves or inside of themselves and looking at things as problems that need to be solved don't really set us up for feeling very enlivened. The second way is for us to actually look at the fact that we've created lives. And by the way, I was having this conversation with Elsa recently. We were going through a, 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 a one of, you know, one of these tough having moments. A moment. You, having a, moment. a moment. We were going, going through a moment. moment. And, and 
you know, having the conversation, well, if we've created this life, we can create whatever we want. And oh, by the way, we've created a life that 90% of the people would love. And I don't mean it, you know, we're, we live in a very rich place in the United States. I'm thinking about from a global perspective, 90% of the people, and, and that's probably true for most of the people that are listening to this. On a global scale, most people would give their lives to be able to have the life that you created. And so if you've created 90% and you want to get to 95 awesome let's let's now approach this like we can create that which is well then let's look at what our vision is and what the problems are that we that are going to hold us back from doing that and deal with the resistance that's standing in our way and what i what i love about what we're exploring right now too is and i think this is i think is the first time we're really making this connection in a way. I mean, we've talked a lot about resistance, we've talked a lot about the five dead ends, but i think what we're what you and i are What's coming clear to me right now anyway, is that like if, if resistance is at the core, the, the fruits, if you will, the toxic fruits of resistance manifest in these five dead ends, right? I, I, I think about the first one, cynicism, right? The cynicism of men. I mean, this is a thing that I constantly have to be on guard against in myself. You know, I talked about the resistance that I've been experiencing to my life and man, there's so much cynicism that comes with that then the, you know, what does the, that sound like for you? What is yeah, this? What, yeah. A script, the script yeah. of cynicism so what's the script? In, in my brain is this place sucks. It's all <laughs> concrete. <laughs> I have to drive 45 minutes to get anywhere. You know, uh, uh, it's going to burn down in a big wildfire or an earthquake someday. We're just waiting to die. You know, it's fucking horrible. It's like, how am I going to feel good in my daily life when that's the script, the narrative yeah. running in my brain? Yeah. You know, yeah. and, and I don't, when that is the predominant story, I'm miserable and my wife by extension is miserable. And so, um, <clears throat> you know, that cynical mindset and you and I, we, we encounter that a lot with men also before they're coming into this container before they think about you know working with us or doing or, or working doing any kind of personal growth work. I think that's one of the major things blocking men is cynicism. It won't work. You know, therapists are just high paid friends I don't want anyway. You know, they oh we're just gonna talk about shit. What good is that? <clears throat> and so on and so forth. Or, you know, coaching is just people charging a lot of money for nothing. And also, you know, this is tied to some other things, but the cynicism of men about being in experiences with other men. I mean, it's so often that men haven't had trustable men to go do life with. And so this idea that I'm going to go and ex have an experience with other guys, uh, you know, I mean, the guy, literally the guy who who just signed up uh, was like, man, it's, I, as soon as I as soon as I just registered, that first thought is, man, this isn't going to work. I'm not going to, I'm, I'm not going to be able to do this. I don't have what it, you know, I don't have what it takes in order to make this happen. You know, so it's either the external, this won't work on the outside, or it's an internal, which is, I don't have what it takes to make this thing happen. And either way, when cynicism is pointed in the direction of where we want to go, well, that talk about resistance, talk about slowing us down, talking to us about us being in quicksand, and and by the way, look, the 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 there's a part of us as men, I talked about the two ways to approach things. We are rewarded in life for solving problems. No doubt. We we are, you know, whether or not it's in our jobs or whether or not it's the safety of our families to to try to protect them. And so we're looking out for danger everywhere. And that's not to demonize that. But when we're done just surviving. And we want something that's great. We've got to get out of the survival mindset and get into the mindset that, that, that there isn't always problems that have to be solved. I mean, you know, I, we could go down a whole rabbit hole in relationship, having the orientation of there's a problem here. You know, I realized when I did the date with Destiny last year with, with Tony Robbins, that that question that I'm constantly asking that wasn't serving me was, what's wrong here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And so if I'm oriented, that's a cynical mind. That's, you know, I go into a fast food restaurant and be thinking about how they can be optimizing because I hate standing in this long ass line. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> something's wrong. What's wrong here? And then I, it puts me yeah. into a fix it mode. Yeah, if yeah. my kids walk in, what's wrong here? If there's something happened with my wife, what's wrong? And that orientation of thinking about what's wrong here is the cynical mind trying to protect itself and creating damage with all the people that I care about most. One of the things that I've been doing, Tate, to really take on my cynicism, because I know it's a dead end. I mean, this is this is what we we teach this. We uh, talk about this. We you know, we teach what we want to learn, right? But I I know the I know how deadly it is. I mean, we call it the five dead ends for a reason because it's a fucking dead end, and so. You know, but I, I'm human. I'm I'm as prone to cynicism as anybody. And look, I think to some degree, it's also there's a there's a place for having a little bit of a distrusting mindset around the world. The world will take advantage of you. There are people out there that don't mean you well. Plenty of them, and so on and so forth. And so it's, again, it's not that cynicism in itself is 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 wrong, but like in in the situation I'm in, it's not serving me at all. And so the, the antidote for that is, you know, the things that I'm doing is I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm working very actively daily on inspiring my mind. You know, I heard this beautiful talk from a man named David Alt, who okay. uh, just this past weekend, he, he's worked with Louise Hay uh, from okay. Hay House Publishing. Yep. Brilliant man. I, I really appreciated um, meeting him this past weekend and at a, at a little church we went to. <clears throat> and he, told this story about the Hubble telescope when mm -hmm. it first was built and came online. And you had all these scientists vying for time on the Hubble telescope. Like this is the thing that was going to peer the deepest into the universe, into, into the sky that, that we've ever seen before. And this one scientist said, uh, I, what I want to do <clears throat> is point the Hubble at a postage stamp size of the sky like this tiny little postage size, just pointed. Mm -hmm. And I want to do it for 100 hours in that one spot where we can't see anything. Okay. And at least in, in David's telling of this story, the, a lot of the other people who wanted time on the telescope thought, well, that's ridiculous. There's nothing there. Why would we look there for a hundred hours? No less time is precious. There's plenty of things in the sky that we can look at that we can already see. Let's study that. Let's focus there. Anyway, long story short, he points the sky a hundred hours at, uh, points the telescope into one spot of sky for a hundred hours. So we're peering deeper into what looks to be blank space than, than we've ever seen before. And as it turns out, there are billions of galaxies <laughs> in that crazy. postage stamp that was crazy. size of sky, billions of galaxies. It's, and, and what that's again, revealing for me, like my work right now it's to pierce beyond the veil of what my mind is telling me is real, right? The cynical mind tells me I can't trust men. Los Angeles sucks. Uh, you know, the earthquake's going to kill us all, whatever. It just, it doesn't tell me anything. It, 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 it's trying to keep me alive, but it's not yeah. helping me thrive. Yeah. yeah. And my work is to pierce beyond that veil to find the inspiration, the beauty, the gifts that are absolutely here and that I'm already receiving in so many ways. But to focus, you know, my internal telescope on that part of the sky where I, where the, the the concrete jungle isn't, right? If I focus on that, all I'm going to see is more concrete and it's going to just make me more miserable every day. Yeah. Yeah. But rather yeah. getting inspired, you know, listening to the way that I'm doing that is also, you know, going back to my roots, listening to Abraham Hicks on uh, YouTube, listening to Alan Watts doing guided meditations, my Joe Dispenza meditations. And, and again, and focusing on, you know, this Saturday in three days, I'm going to jet ski from uh, Long Beach to Catalina Island. Wow, yeah. That's two hours. That's, a, that's, that's quite a jet ski. Across kind of open ocean. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. And, and I got invited by uh, uh, this, this guy that I've been becoming friends with here who's just been a gift uh, in, in, in mine and Sylvie's life. Him and his wife have just been a gift in our world. And I, focusing on that, 
you know, getting inspired. I mean, that is the antidote to cynicism is disciplining our minds to into inspiration. I, you know, we, we label it this way, but what's, what's powerful about that is this notion of being down a dead end. Whenever I hit a dead end, I like, I imagine it like the end of a dark, 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 dark place. And I'm feeling around and I have no idea how to get myself out of, you know, one of the powerful things of the conversation I had today with the guy is he's like, like, as soon as you talked about cynicism, it's, it's like, I, I hadn't ever seen it before. And now I know he rated him. You know, one of the things we have people do is rate yourself on a scale of one to 10. How much is this a dead end for you? And he was like, it's a 10 out of 10 but he had never been able to see that that was something that was so prevalent for him. Well then, okay, well now that you see that it's, it's prevalent, well, what, what do you do about it? Like, I always want to know when I find that I'm banging my head up against the wall, what do I do about it? And what you're speaking to is this idea that you found this dark alley and you feeling around and you find this locked door. And at the end of the day, what you're speaking to is that inspiration is the key that unlocks that dead end. It gets you out of that dark place. And, and it's not like you have to go walk back down the whole long alley again. It's like, oh no, in this moment, there's something that I can, I can choose to be inspired by. I can do something to fill myself with hope, with optimism, with, with things that would help shift my mindset because I know that I have to get inspired in order for me. Because how in the world, if you've got an inspired vision, right? To live happy, incredible life with Sylvie. And for now it's in, it's in Los Angeles. How in the world are you going to live powerfully? you know, beautifully connected with the people that you care about most and, and enjoy your day-to-day -day life. If you sit inside of the, that, that talking that would destroy everything that's around you. And, and, and last night I went to another friend's house who has a beautiful home in one of the most beautiful parts of LA that I'd never even heard of before. It's in the, this place called Mandeville Canyon. And it's, I mean, I probably drove past I don't know, billions of dollars worth of real estate. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, no, most certainly. Most certainly. And and not that my friend has one of those, but it doesn't matter. She's got a beautiful home at the the, the like four miles into this canyon. Uh, I went to over to have dinner with her last night and and she's such an incredible like she knows how to design space. And uh I was so inspired by her home. She's on a little over an acre of land back in this deep in this Canyon. Mm. Oh man, my whole body just, just ah, relaxed. And, and again, my mind, there's, I have a choice. I can, I, the path of cynicism is, Oh, I'll never have this. Yeah. Yeah. This is too big a leap for me. This is impossible. You got to have so much money, blah, 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 and blah, 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 cynics. Cynic. Or, Oh man, this is what's possible here. This is available. It doesn't mean that yeah, that's, that's totally. what it will look like for me, but this is possible. Let this be yeah. inspiring, not. Yeah. Well, and you're, and what's powerful about that is you're actually stepping into like in some ways talking about a, another dead end that we have as men, right? Which is when we isolate, mm -hmm. right? You, you imagine you hunkering down and even just trying to be inspired by yourself you know, trying to, trying to will, will your, your, the inspiration into life. But the fact that you're surrounding yourself with dear friends who are doing life in a really interesting way. I mean, the, the, the guy today, we were, again, we were talking to, and it, you know, that's trying to live a life where he feels alive and where he's honest with the people that matter, that he has deep intimacy with his son. Um, you know, one of the things he was talking about is that he's longing to live life with people, but he's looking around in his everyday life and everybody he tries to have real conversations with, they're not available for that. Like they start closing off and here's this guy that's really trying to connect and can't find someone to connect to. And there's two different challenges with isolation. Either we isolate ourselves or we don't feel like in the community we were longing for it, but we don't have it available to us. So the, the, in a world where you're trying to be inspired, like the, what a gift that you went and found this woman who has, is living life in an inspirational way. We need people to, to draw us into our greatness. And, and if we're trying to do something that we've never done before, what we, what the easiest thing for us to do in life is just to keep doing what we've been doing. It is so easy for us to just stay on autopilot and do those things. But 
the tendency, if we decide that we want to do something new, if we're not, if we're not supported, we will just, we will try it. We will start it. There's a reason why only 7% of people who set New Year's resolutions succeed at it. 93% of people don't. And one of the reasons is that they set new goals for themselves and they try to do it by themselves. Like you trying to live an inspired life in, in, in Los Angeles. Good luck doing it on your own. Well, that's, and that is one of the unique challenges of LA that it's, it's easy to feel isolated here. It's easy to be isolated here and you're surrounded by people. It's one of the challenges that I struggle with in big cities as it is. The, the loneliest I've ever felt in my life has been in, in a city surrounded by people. Brian, I live in an amazing community of, you know, you've been here. And as it relates to being able to find my people, like we, we were super close with one couple that moved and haven't found another couple to do life with. So it's true in Los Angeles. It's true in, in Spain. It's true in the Netherlands and Charlotte, North Carolina. <laughs> it's true everywhere that all of us are longing for connections that we can't seem to find with the like-minded people that we want to do life with. You, we have that, you know, amazing friend, Jonathan, who you introduced me to. Yeah, I was just thinking um, of John. I was just thinking of his journey over the last couple of years. As, yeah, say more about well. that. Well, and you know him, 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 and his family traveling, trying to find home, and them even landing in places where they were sure this is it. Like we found it. This is the community. This is the land. This is only to realize not long after. Oh my God, it's not here either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it seems to be a, a hunger of of the modern era, and I think one of the things that I, you, you know, you and I, we've been hosting these, you know, facilitating these men's groups, men's work for the last four years or coming up on year five. And that's one of the great revelations that we've had. I think a few years in is like, one of the things we're doing is creating belonging, helping men experience belonging. And for some men for the first time in their adult lives, if not their entire lives. And, um, when you talk about the opposite of isolation is, is belonging, is finding a place where you belong. And so many men are living in exile, even inside of their own families. Yeah. 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 You know, they have kids, spouses, and yet still feel like they don't fully belong even in their own families. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if, and in a world of belonging, there's support. Right. When you belong and you feel like you're, you're amongst peers that are with you, like there, there's a, there's something new that's available to you. If you set out over the next course of the year that you want to have better fitness and health than you've ever had in your life, you want to have deep personal intimate relationship with your wife in ways that you've never known how to do before. You want to step into being the father that you know your kids need you to be. Well, good luck doing that on your own. Right. But if you do surround yourself with other guys that are on a similar path to you, that are going to be have your back, that are going to witness you, are going to support you, going to challenge you, going to celebrate like that's what else are we doing this for other than to be in life with the people that really inspire us? So there is a tie, of course, into these dead ends and the, and the ways out of them. The, the key of, of isolation is, is being supported. Well, let's not just be supported by people to, who don't inspire you. That's a fact. That's not, that's not the kind of support that serves. I mean, not to say that there isn't support out there. I mean, look, there's support shows up in all kinds of ways. Well, yeah, totally. It's the, it's the guy who's going to the bar and talking about how his marriage sucks. And the guy's like, Oh, I'll just go get another one. Well, I, you know, thanks for supporting me, but it's not really helpful. <laughs> you know what you, what you just said isn't helpful. Yeah. And I think that's, again, that's something that as I've come back to a place where I, I tend to feel lonely at times and feel isolated. One of the most important practices I've, I have got to be up to just like going to my friend's house last night, uh, the night before that I had coffee with another friend, uh, going on this trip, this jet ski trip this weekend with a, a group of guys, um, getting support from people who inspire me, who are living epic lives here in Los Angeles, who, you know, and I'm connected with, you know, in, in the, the, the group of men I've been with for four years now, um, just man, 
being in connection, whether in person or through the, the technological means that we have being in direct conversation with people that are living epic lives is like, for me, you know, my best business plan, my best life plan is just keep putting myself in the same room with people who inspire me that right there money. Yeah. And what, what I love about the, the, you know, the elevate year long, you know, 2025 experience is that if you're having trouble finding guys in your backyard, you're going to be, you know, what we're doing is curating a, an experience where we're going to hand, we're going to talk to 70 guys and hand select the 10 that are going to have an epic lifelong connection with one another. And it starts with this in this virtual world, but halfway through we get to, you know, we get to have a retreat with one another, bump up against each other, you know, and before the end of the year, they've already selected another time that they're going to get together within the coming months after the program's over. It's like they, they get to be in the presence of one another. So you get the best of both worlds. You get a virtual experience where if you don't have somebody in your backyard, you get to, you get to have that person and you get to have real life people that you get to live life with, show up with, uh, not this weekend, but next weekend, I'm going on a retreat with, with what ended up being my men's group, which is the elevate 2021 guys. We now call that group elevate today. Cause we're just trying to elevate today, not an entire year, but how do we, how do we do that? So, you know, having the, I, I love that you're trying to build that up in LA and, and I, I remember Dom, I won't get in, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Uh, who was in our year long program and then started developing experience because he learned the skills yeah, yeah. in our group about how to greet, create trustable experiences, then started hosting events for men in his area. Yeah. Um, started having the, real conversations with the men in his life. So that's, that's another way of doing this is that some men end up learning the skills on how to do it in their backyards. And then they're able to go do that. So two dead ends. We've cynicism talked about cynicism and isolation. Let's, let's jump over to numbing out. Sadly, this is like something that I was like a PhD uh, winner in, right? It's numbing out, which is, I believe that every single person is using something to help them deal with the pain that they're experiencing in their life. And numbing out, whether or not you're, you're working extra, you know, 80 hours a week to numb out, whether or not you're shopping or gambling or, you know, doom scrolling or watching porn or gambling or drinking, or, you know, everybody is using something. And if we don't get real straight in ourselves about what we are doing to numb out, then whatever vision that we have for the future that we want to step into is going to be blunted. When we're caught in a cynical mindset, right? Looking at the world as though it's just a place to go get defeated by, and we're isolating. I mean, numbing out is a, seems very, like a good option. It seems like a good idea. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, I'm mindful that, you know, my, my PlayStation five, my PS five is in storage and I need to leave it there right now because the worst thing that I could do and the most tempting, given the challenges that I'm up to in this, you know, recalibrating to my life in Los Angeles and just all the, all the complexity Sylvie and I are holding. And there's, there's a, there's a lot more that, you know, I haven't, I'm not sharing. And just because it's, 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 you know, it's irrelevant to, to, to this conversation, but oh, the temptation to numb out, to just get lost in hours and hours of video games is so tempting. You know, I have a quest three and I, what, one of the things I love about the quest three is the battery doesn't last very long. And one of my friends that I'll, I'll get on with from time to time, who, who, uh, he's a, I love this guy and he has, he doesn't work. He has no job. He doesn't need to work. He's, 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 he's well off such that he, he's, uh, he's fine. Um, he suggested I get a battery uh, extender pack, <laughs> <laughs> like a cable that I can just plug into the wall, into the headset. And I'm like, you know, maybe someday, but right now I need the battery to run out on that thing so that I don't use it as a tool to just mm. disappear from yeah. the challenges that are, that are here for me to, to yeah. confront. Yeah. And what I love about the, and it's, you know, so that can be a hobby. And what I love about what you're saying, like, and what, what I think we believe firmly in is this is not about going to zero. No, 
this is not about, you know, no. don't ever do something to numb and don't to ever have a, don't ever have a don't drink, ever have don't fun. ever play a video game. Exactly. Not at all. Not at all. But if you're currently, if you, you know, we have guys rate themselves on a scale of one to 10. And if you're like at a seven or above, it might help if you took it down two or three notches. Throw out that battery pack that extends your your headset. <laughs> it's about managing the ways in which we're numbing out. And the whole purpose of it, that key that we're trying to get to is getting to a, a life where we're more present. The keys to numbing out is to get present. How do we get present? We get we get straight about what actually is. We, 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 we notice what's actually happening, what the ways in which we're trying to numb out from the past or numb out from the future that we're terrified from. How do we really get here in the present moment? You know, I remember early on, my kids were young and I, I didn't, I learned that I have sensory issues by having a son that has sensory issues. I had no, I, it's like the guy who didn't know he was cynical until oh, somebody showed him that this is a, a thing. I had no idea how how I really struggle, struggled from a sensory. That's why Brooke Weinstein has been so instrumental and has helped me so much to realize how how dysregulated I can be. And so as having two young kids that that both are are sensitive and emotional and have big uh, big emotions and can express themselves I, it it blew my circuits. It, it, it really, I, I, I couldn't manage the screaming child. And I, and then I beat myself up over the fact that I, what, what was wrong with me as a dad that, that I would have this angst and, and frustration and anxiety and all things that I couldn't even articulate because I didn't know what was happening to me. But I was completely dysregulated and and then I started going deep down the path of numbing out in all kinds of unhelpful ways. And it's not because I didn't want to do better. I didn't know how to do better. I didn't even know that I was numbing out. I, it's like it, I, I was swimming in the water and I didn't know that I was I was drowning. Yeah. Um, so, again, this is not about judgment. It's not about. Um, criticism. It, this is about how did I, how do I need to start getting present to what was actually happening for me so that I could hold the sensory issues, the anxiety, the, the anger in ways that didn't then start spilling out every single time that my nervous system got, got hijacked. Yeah. yeah. And it's about being present to the consequences of numbing out. Totally. Right. I think like even, totally. you know, a lot of men will use pornography as a way to feel something or to, yeah. to check out, to, to numb out. Ironically, I'm not anti-pornography at all, but if you're using pornography as a distraction, as a way of numbing out from the pain, maybe you're feeling because you're relate, maybe you're just, you're, you're lonely. You don't have a partner or you're in a relationship and you're not satisfied in some meaningful way. And that's an out. That's a, that's a way of escaping difficult conversations or, yeah, there uh, it is. Okay, look at that, right? That's what we need to look at. I'm aware. So for one of for me, one of my numbing out tools is 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 video games. And I know, you know, what I love about my wife is she supports me. If I want to play some video games, she supports me, but she also knows as do I, there's a point where I'm yeah. not just having fun anymore. Yeah. I'm yeah. I'm checked out into a whole other world. Yeah. And 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 I, especially at a time like what I'm what we've been going through the last year or so, the last couple of years in this in this relocating back to LA. Again, man, there are some real challenges afoot for me. There's there's a there's a you know, I'm at the feet of another mountain. Foot, feet, the mountain have feet or they have foot. foot I'm at the no. foot. Foot hill. I'm, I'm in the foothills. <laughs> foothills. I'm at the I'm at the feet. I don't know why that works. I'm at the base. I'm at the base of another mountain to climb. And, um, and I'm up for the climb. I'm, I'm, it, because if I'm not, I'll lose my marriage. I'll lose my marriage. I'll lose my business. I'll lose, I'll, I'll lose everything that I had built. I know I will because that's what dead ends do. They cause us to lose the things that matter most to us inevitably. And so, Again, I, you know, everyone has to find their way with this, but it's about being present, right? The way out of numbness, out of numbing out, 
the antidote, if you will, is getting present, present to the impact, present to what am I avoiding? You know, what, what am I, what is the challenge that I'm faced with that numbing out enables me to not have to face or, or kicks the can down the road anyway? And, and, and that being present to the ways in which we are self-sabotaging is, is foundational for us to get present because if we get present, then we are no longer shackled by the sabotage that has held us back from stepping into lives that we want as men. And we, we have to let those things go. We have to get present for what is putting our heads in the sand as our business is failing or putting our heads in the sand as our kids are, are deeply struggling or our marriage is falling apart or whatever it is that we're up to. It, it, it makes it that much harder to address what there is to address. And it, it, once we notice, once we get present to the reality of the impact that these things are having, we ask for help. We get some support. We, we get inspired. There's a, there's a combination of the ways that these things really can help us go. And I, I do think, you know, we've built this in such a way where it, there's naturally another dead end that we end up facing as men, especially if we've been cynical and isolated and numbing out. And that is that we have a tendency to get disoriented as men, not yeah. having clarity about where we, what, what we want and where we need to go. Yeah. We're, we're wayward. We're, I don't know if I go down this way, I don't know where that's going to lead. And I don't know about this. And so we get, we get disoriented. Why don't you talk a little bit more about that? Well, I think about, you know, when I was in the military in my young twenties, I knew deeply that this wasn't my path long-term. Mm, yeah. I, I felt it deeply and it was very painful, you know, cause in the military, I'm oriented in a certain way. In fact, in the military, they hand you a 20 year plan that, you know, if you want to make a colonel, you've got to do, do this assignment, do that assignment, go to get this training, do that school. Like there's a whole pro pro progression. And that's fine if you really want to make colonel. If you're oriented towards making colonel, okay, the military has a plan for you. <laughs> you just, just map. you may or may not get there, but at least you have a plan to follow. Well, I knew that wasn't my plan. And most, what I, what I found is when I got out of the military though, I was so fucking lost. I didn't have any mentors. I didn't have any wise elders orienting, helping me get oriented in a meaningful way. The, the, what, what was, what, what culture was attempting to orient me around was go make money. Just do that. Go make money, get your house, get your, get your wife, you know, have your kids, have your BMW, whatever, get nothing wrong with any of that. But at a soul level, I just knew like that is, if I just, if, if that's what I orient around exclusively, I'm, I'm dead man walking. What did you say recently? I, I was watching one of your posts, maybe it was yesterday. It's like, uh, was it Carl Jung that, that notion if they, you going out into the world, if you don't know what you want, it will tell you what if the world, something, if the world asks you who you are and you don't know, then the world will tell you will tell you who you are. And I think a lot of men are living inside of that incongruence. The world is trying to tell them who they are. You go into work and the, and your boss is wanting to tell you who you are. You go into your relationship and your wife is telling you who you are. You, you're struggling with your kids. Your kids are going to tell you who you are. Like go, wow. go on Instagram, open social media. There's plenty of people that'll tell you either who you are or who you need to be. And so I think a lot of men, again, that, that, that even when I, I think that crisis almost becomes even greater when we do succeed, when we finally achieve the things that we thought yes. are who we are. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, uh, this ain't working. Something's still off and missing. I came at it through the idea of being oriented. Yeah. Right. You don't really hear that talk. We don't, we don't hear that kind of language much. Like we hear the word purpose. Yeah. Yeah. But we don't yeah. really hear it. We don't really hear it languaged as being oriented around yeah. the things that matter most. Yeah. And again, I've, I've, I've been acutely aware, I think because of the intensity of, of my military experience and being, feeling the incongruence of, 
of, of having an orientation inside of that being told how to be oriented. I mean, even down to the, you know, being told how to wear my hair, how to, mm. how to, you know, how to cut my hair, how to tuck in my shirt, like how to present my, all of that. And this other side of me, that's like, that's not who I fucking am. That's not who I want to be. This is so like the pain of that, the tension between those extreme opposites in a way um, coming out of that, you know, I thought about a lot of my friends who at that age, who didn't do that experience, who were, you know, kind of oriented towards comfort, you know, job status, m money. And, 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 you know, they seemed mildly, they seemed happy enough and I was kind of envious of them. But what I've also seen over the years is a lot of those same friends, they'll hit that existential crisis anyway. Like it's coming for all of us. It's coming for all of us. I mean, Tate, you and I, I mean, we've in the past few years, we've worked with men, we've worked with doctors, we've worked with uh, 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 major airline pilots, we've worked with lawyers, we've worked with men that, again, that are at the top of their game, not, you know, not 20 year old pilots, but, you know, 50 year old pilots and doctors, like men who are at the top of their game. And that, that, not that they regret their path or they would do something else, but still that deep, deep existential, what the fuck am I supposed to be doing here? That transcends my, my job title. Like yeah. that kind of disorientation I think is common in men. I think what I've been experiencing coming back to, you know, the last year or two or so, I think being a relationship that can get even more, even more complicated. It, it gets complex because it's one thing to be clear about where I might go as a single man, but now I'm in partnership with a woman who has her own orientation, who has her own visions and dreams and needs and all of that. And, and finding my way inside of that, oh man, that's been next level. You know, I'm also reminded of the 35 year old entrepreneur that, that, you know, joined us and the, what's the oldest guy that we've mid late sixties. Early 60s, maybe 62, yeah. 60. Arthur Brooks has this book called Strength to Strength. And it's really for the, the, the person in their, in life that has achieved some success and has some strength in their life, but they're looking for the next thing that's going to really move the needle for them and how critical it is when men get to that place where they hit a particular threshold that that what matters most is that we can leverage and carry the things that we've learned. But, but one of the things we talk about in terms of being oriented is, look, entropy is a real thing. Mm, yeah. Things are always falling apart. So what matters in life m more than where we are is the momentum that we have behind us. You know, pe people can't see this, but if if we're here... <laughs> And our momentum is going, if we're wherever we are, but our momentum is, is taking us into the dirt. That makes us, that, that momentum down towards the dirt is, is more important than the fact that we're on a mountaintop. And it's also more important than if we're at the base, the foothills, <laughs> the base, the foots of the mountain. And we're heading up towards the top of the mountain. What matters most is the momentum. Well, what gives us momentum is how we're oriented, right? So being oriented towards a future that matters to you, being oriented towards people that enliven you, being oriented in ways that you know will help you to come to life more fully, man. And one of the things we, we, this is something we dive into as well uh, in this year long journey with men, but, but a lot of us tend to be oriented around survival around around playing just to not lose yeah yeah right rather than playing to win yeah right uh, those are two totally different ball games definitely and we're all going to orient around something whether it's seeking pleasure avoiding pain uh checking out uh having things be easy Stepping into your greatness or, or right. Stepping into your greatness, leaning into your relationship. Um, so I think, you know, as a, as the fourth dead end in no particular order, you know, disoriented, the disorientation that we feel it's, it's the antidote for that is getting oriented. Of course, you know, getting inspired, getting oriented, 
And, and, and then there are people that know what they need to do, but don't have the power to do it. Well, this is the thing about being disoriented is that if I'm, if I'm not deeply, deeply oriented or towards the things that matter to me, that disorientation ultimately creates powerlessness. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Which is the fifth dead end that, that we might have a vision for where we want to go. We might have a future that we want to live into. We might want to be a great father. We might want to build a great business. We might want to, you know, figure things out in ways that we've never figured things out before. But, but if we don't feel like our actions matter, or we don't have the discipline that it takes to, to put one foot in front of the other, to actually get us to where we go. It's the guy that says, I don't, I, I, I I'm afraid that I won't be able to stick with it and do it. Or, or that, we don't have the mindset to believe the mindset that it's possible, that our vision is possible. Like going to my friend's home last night and she's created this you know, beautiful, I mean, you know, I mean, home and this exquisite area. It's so tempting for me to believe I can't, I can't create that mm. in my own way and Definitely. feel powerless, the powerlessness that then that, that the feeling of powerlessness and how, again, all of these dead ends connect to each other. Cause the moment I, the moment I buy into that, man, the cynical brain then comes online. Ah, oh, fuck it. Why am I even here? Why bother? It's impossible. I'll never be able to create that. I'm broken. I'm different. I'm and so on. And then <laughs> the numbing out temptation arises, the isolation, all of them play off of each other. Yeah. And we, you know, we've talked about this before, but one of the, one of the things that happens, right, we've talked about the, the fact that the two most powerful and important things that there are for a man to do is to show up and to speak up in his life. Right. So for the, we have a tendency to show up and then stop showing up. Well, that's not power. That's not being powerful. It's being powerless, like being given by our circumstances. I used to carry on the identity. Well, I'm not going to do anything unless I feel like doing it. <laughs> that, that, that was not very powerful because I needed to feel good in order to do good. And right. it's, it's far not, more powerful to do good when you don't feel like doing it. It's not, it's not good for a marriage either. It's not good for a parent. It's not good for being a business owner. It's, you know, it's not. So, so how do we learn as men to be powerful, even when we don't feel like it? How do we show up for ourselves and the, for the people that we love, even when we don't feel like it? So showing up and then speaking up because a man who's showing up, but doesn't speak up is not going to keep his power. He's going to feel anxious and impotent because now he's shying away. He's pretend he has to be the nice guy. Well, that's not powerful. Sometimes we have to have really difficult conversations with one another. Sometimes we need to challenge the status quo. Sometimes if we see something wrong in the world, we got to be willing to step forward and do something about it. So to be powerful is to show up and to speak up in our lives in ways in, in ways that we've never been able to do before. And again, by the way, if we try to do that alone, good luck. Well, t you know, as you're talking, I'm, I'm thinking about my dog, Yellow Jean. Okay. Bring me in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, there's, there's a connection here. I promise. <laughs> um, We'll she's see. a, she's a golden retriever. Is this one of your, one of your metaphors that falls flat? Or no, 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 no. This is solid. This is solid. Okay. Is I solid. can't wait. Yeah. All my, my metaphors tend to suck and they always, they, if I take them too far, they just completely fall apart. <laughs> no, 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 this is legit. So she's a, she's a, she's a, uh, a golden retriever, a water dog. She was bred for the water, but she didn't grow up. She didn't, you know, for the first two years or so of her life, she wasn't around that much water. She didn't have any other dogs playing. Like she, every time we would go near a pool or a, or a river, she would, you could see she was some excitement, but she would never go near it. And then one day we were in Maryland with her down by the, at the, by the river, by my parents' house. And there was another dog there swimming in the river. Yellow John, I remember watching her she saw that dog in the water and she leapt into the water. The modeling, yeah. seeing another yeah. this is a good one. creature. Okay, like Here's the link. That it. modeling. I think this is, you know, going from powerless to powerful. This is one of the things that I think, Tate, you and I do so well because we model power in a way that is not disempowering That's to right. others. 
Yeah. You know, the way, and this is why I think men need to gather with men because I, there's ways that I can't be power, express my power with my wife because I'll hurt her. And I don't just mean physically. I mean, even just the way that I want to challenge another person. She doesn't want that from me. She doesn't want that from her husband, right? The feminine rises to praise. The f- her heart doesn't come alive in the kind of challenge that I want to often be engaged in. In fact, it, in fact, she withers in face of challenge that I might otherwise offer. But in the f- in in groups of men, this is where we can kind of wrestle with each other, both intellectually, verbally, even physically. Right? We 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 do some beautiful physical. Uh, things that are at our retreats that, that again, I just can't do with my wife. And, oh, and when we model that, that's why, you know, mentoring, modeling, that's why, you know, Yellow Jean seeing that other dog jump into the water, it changed her life, right? It's like she had it in her DNA, but she had never seen it done before. Yep. And, and, you know, the, that modeling, the, that notion that we've had a lot of olders, but not enough elders. And what what I love is that when when 12 powerful men get together and and do life together, they're there. We talk about this all the time, especially when we talk about it in the context of what we believe to be the five pillars of a thriving man. You know, there are some areas of a life that that inevitably we are killing it. We are doing great. We are, we, we, we got something to share and we are making a difference. And inevitably there's going to be other areas of our life where we're sucking wind. And in the context of a group of men coming together, there's there inevitably there's somebody at, at the height of the mountain and somebody in, in the dirt, in the ashes. And, and together we get to help one another because you know, in a, in a, we talk about this, but we are headed, we are in one of three places in our life. We are either headed for a storm that we've never been in before. And we need help to figure out how to navigate this brand new storm that we've never seen before. We are in the middle of a shit storm and we don't exactly know how to get out. Yeah. And we're disoriented and lost and maybe taking steps in the right direction. But we, we need somebody to bring some, some, you know, Clarity, some clarity or help or ideas, vision or whatever, or we're on the other side and we're in a great place. And in that place, we got some, we got some gifts to bring to the world. And no matter where you find yourself, there's, there's parts this, I used to think it was like all or nothing. I used to think if one area of my life was shit, my whole life was shit. Mm-hmm. But now I, I, you know, there's enough, there's enough life experience now that we've, we've had that we know that if we're in the dirt, we're not going to be in the dirt for too long. We're going to be all right. And this, this area of my life might be bad, but I got these other three areas that I'm doing great. And it gives me a, a way to navigate that and still be powerful in areas of my life where I have power. And I don't have to give in to the impotence, the belief that, that I'm not powerful, that I have nothing that I can do about things. So the five dead ends, isolated, disoriented, cynical, numb, and powerless, right? And the, and the, the antidotes to each, if you're, if you're the keys out of the darkness, the keys out of the dark, the keys that unlock that dead end. If you're feeling isolated, get supported. If you're feeling disoriented, figure out how to get oriented around what matters to you. If you're, if you're noticing a cynical mindset thought pattern that just keeps repeating, You've got to figure out how to get inspired if you're numbing out. And again, I'm, I'm all for numbing out, for, you know, for a couple minutes every day. I mean, we, we need, we need some time. We need some checkout time, but if you're numbing out in a way that is not serving you, you've got to get present to that. And if you feel powerless in some important domain of your life and, and Tate, you and I've worked with, with men again, I say this because I think it's, it's, this needs to be said, men that are crushing it, that are powerful at, at their work, but come home and are utterly clueless about how to be powerful in that situation in, in their relationships, powerful to, to lead the they're, relationship. They're, they're to, a hero in the world and a zero at home. <laughs> exactly. So let's land this plane, Tate. It is one of the greatest honors of our life that we get to have the most important conversations with men in, in their lives to, to help 
create threshold moments where they are ready to step into their greatness. They're ready to step into what's next. They're ready to step into an inspired vision. And they know that if they try to go it alone, they're going to end up doing what they've always done, which is to revert to the same actions, the same mindsets, the same dead ends that have gotten them to a place where they're not as fulfilled as they want to be. And this isn't for men that are in the dirt in every area. This is, this is a conversation for men that just know that there's something else available to them. And if you're in that boat and you want to have just, even if it's a powerful conversation so you can get clarity in your life, then go to, to go to Brian's website, brianreeves.com forward slash L elevate E L E V A T E Brian with a Y B R Y A N Reeves R E E V E S dot com and sign up for a consultation. Fill out the application. Tell us what you want to create in your life, and we will figure out whether or not there's a good fit to do this program together. And if there's a great fit that we'll talk about what it looks like to work together. If there's a different offering that we have to help support you, we will. And if we don't think it's a good fit, we're going to find a polite way of telling you that and giving you, give you some other resources. But here's the deal. You have the life that you have and you can either see it as a problem that to deal with, or you can realize that you've created what you have and you can also create something else. And that's what we're interested in doing with men is having a conversation about what you want to create in your life and let you know that if you go on this journey with us, that we will have your back and we will do everything in our power to ensure that you get what you came for. And as of the time of this recording, we've only got nine spots left. Uh, we got three months still to go till we dive in uh, in January. And one of the things that I think excites me most, Tate, just from a personal viewpoint is I've said it a few times, I'm, I'm at the feet of a, of a new mountain. And this is like, this feels like a, uh, this feels like a, a, this is a big, big, big year coming up for me personally, man. It has. To. I'm sure it's a base. I'm pretty sure it's the base of the mountain. <laughs> it has to be a big year for me. It has to be. So what excites me is launching into 2025 with a group of men who also are are wanting, if not needing, to make of 2025 yeah. a, a big year, a breakthrough year. Because you know, my wife again, we we've we've been through some hell in the last two years. You know, man, well, I've been in the ashes. You know, I've been just the, the the ashes of 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 a dream that that you know my wife and I had, and rebuilding from there. You know, and our, our logo in our inside of our logo there's a phoenix yeah yeah and yeah. i boy has that never been more relevant to just me personally and so to to be rising out of the ashes with with men that are up to up to you know committed to 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 thriving in their their lives man i'm i'm all about it i'm super super excited for it me too and i you know it's always appropriate you and i are you know always counterbalancing in some ways cuz I'm in a place right now where like, I'm doing really well. I'm doing you know, like work's going great relationships, solid. There's always room for improvement. I feel like I'm being a father that I never thought that I could be before. I feel like I've got some really practices that enliven me, that's lift me up. And still there's another level that I'm trying to get to, you know? So whether or not you're a guy that's in the ashes or you're already doing great, and you're really just looking for the next level in your life. You want to elevate from where you are. Let's have a conversation. BrianReeves.com slash elevate. We look forward to learning more about you. Uh, thank you so much for listening to Men This Way.